Oh, he's very tall. This. Now we are two girls, and uh, we were trying for a boy, and finally in 1988, which uh, was the centenary year, 16th of February, we were blessed with uh, having a boy, and that boy was Reggie. Yeah, he was um, born at Kent Base Hospital. He was 11 pound, four and a half ounces born. Uh, biggest baby at the time, actually, in Cairns. Yeah, it was probably um, not until about, he was about eight months old, and we went over to New Zealand to my parents. Um, and it was actually my father who said, um, is there anything wrong with this boy? He's quite floppy. And I said, oh, no, Dad, no. No, there's nothing wrong with him. He's just... You know, just a slow at growth, um, and um, so we didn't think anything more of it. He said, "Oh no," and he was trying to get him to sit up. So it was really quite funny. Here's this floppy baby, and he was trying to get him to sit up. Um, but it wasn't until a lot, lo you know, lot probably closer to the school age that um, we thought, "Oh, actually, his doctor, his GP said there's something wrong with Ridge." Um, just before he turned ten. We got involved in a, the, um, in with the Autistic Society. They sent him down to Brisbane, him and I. We had to do a whole week of um, learning of, um, of how to work with Reg. We had no, we just thought, you know, he's, he's, he, you know, he's really taken his time, this fella, you know, and we still, we still did not know or, or we tried to block it out, you know. He used to just do like what normal young boys, toddlers yeah. and that did. I mean, he even put his little bicycle up on top of the trampoline and <laughs> got up on it, you know, real boisterous and um, those kind of things. So yeah. running around with all his cousins and, you know, so you wouldn't know. It wasn't yeah. until he started school that, you know, you could see that he was so far behind a lot of the other students. I think the other thing was is that uh, when, when we finally, you know, found out and, and accepted his intellectual disability and the autism, it still didn't change our way of how we were going to raise him. And that was, we raise him as any other, like a normal child, but like a child that, that had none of these disabilities. So he still had to do all his chores, you know, he still had to clear, clear the table and, you know, we, we didn't sort of say, oh no, you know you know, because he's got a disability, we'll do that. No, just say, come on, mate, you know, help your sisters wash up, help them wipe up, clear the table. Well, I got a break insofar as I got a promotion. I was working for ATSIC at the time, and it meant that I had to come down to Canberra. So I thought, oh, you know, that's a fair way away. If we were going to make the move, it'll have to suit all of us. I'd go back for family leave every quarter, and uh, but I was here for 12 months in 1998. The children and I moved down in Christmas, or just before Christmas, wasn't it, in 99? And then 2000, of course, was the Olympic year. It was going to be held in Australia. And, of course, as we know, following the Olympics is the Paralympic Games. It just so happened... Three months, the family was here. And uh, leading up in that three months, there was a dance troupe here, uh, Garib Sikh Torres Strait Islander dance uh, troupe. And uh, we'd performed and, and Reg was there as well. He was all dressed up. He didn't perform, but he was sitting down and doing all the actions. And then shortly after that, we get this phone call this night and it was one of the senior elders. And she said, look, what I'm ringing up about is us, the traditional owners, Ngunnawal peoples, we've been asked to uh, nominate two runners for the Paralympic torch. We'd like to offer the other position to your boy. And we sort of nearly fell backwards, you know, because, and of course, you know, we are going to say yes. <laughs> we said, oh, we, we'd love, she said, yep, no, that's okay. I'll, I'll put his name up. And uh, lo and behold, Man, he was running the Paralympic torch. 2013, you know, at the ACT NAIDOC Awards, he, uh, he was nominated for uh, the, the 
Sportsman's Award. And when they read out the awards, well, unfortunately, he didn't get it. So we were saying to him, oh, that's OK, mate, you know, you'd be right. You know, somebody else won it, but, you know, at you least you were nominated. nominated. Yeah. And then uh, they come up with this other award, and it was one of the big ones. It's the Community Spirit Award. And the Community Spirit Award, look, previous recipients, they're like at least 30 years older than Rich. Well, anyway, they read out these awards, and when they were talking about the, this recipient, uh, we were sitting down and we were thinking, mm. oh, gee, that's... And everyone sound. came for the awards, and so... We, that sounds like uh, Reg. No, it can't be. And the person who was reading it out, Katrina Fanning, she's crying and, you know, in quite tears, emotional. quite emotional. And she said, it gives me great pleasure to announce that the 2013 Community Spirit Award goes to Reg Hodges. But he also does gym gym work um, after he knocks off from ICV or from industry. He's been with Andy the, yeah. from the gym a few years now um, and so they've got a little bit of a relationship as well so I think he puts Michael Jackson or whatever Ridge lights yeah. on while he's doing the bike or you know boxing. Right. It's a bit harder now come on. Do you like watching the wrestling? Yeah, do you like mm. Hey, who's your favourite wrestler? Don Cena. We went to the wrestling, hey? Yeah. Sissy took the photo of you when you went to the wrestling and then we got there and you were so excited. We got the autograph on the picture from John Cena. Understanding the world of wrestling and you just being in that moment of, of here is your old wrestling icon and just looking at that excitement on your face was, was really touching to see. I'm Stephanie Harvey, I'm the CEO here at Indigenous Community Volunteers. We're a not-for-profit charity. We provide community development support and practitioners in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island communities around Australia. And it's a free service for our mob. And Reg is an instrumental part of that. So he's been working with us for around five or six years. So to keep our materials up to date is really important. So Reg helps us there in removing um, material that's, you know, that, that's outdated, basically. <laughs> is that one for you? <laughs> okay. And Reg is a real resource in the office. He's a delight to be around. I've known Reg and his family for years. Do you want to open? And I can pull the bits out, if you like. Or we just do one each. We've got to be wise with our resources, uh, so we reuse a lot of the stuff. So it's opening that return to send a mail, uh, separating the bits out that we can reuse and then recycling those bits that we can't. It's great that we've got a resource in Reg that we can rely on and is so happy and cheery and does such a great job and really supports the work that we do so we can get out and support the work that we need to do to enable our mum to get on with achieving what their vision is. Yeah. How full has that been? Do you want me to get the key from me and Reg and we'll just open it up? So that's going to make it easier for us. Great, don't put me in the bin. On a personal note, what I really love about having Reg in the office is he's also a Queensland supporter. We'll do that one. Sorted. Beauty. So those green buckets, Reg, can go back to my desk. Yep. And we're done. Thanks, mate. So every Tuesday, uh, Reg and Peppy, who... Peppy comes with Reg. Uh, Peppy's from a, the outside organisation, go down to our local post office. They take the outgoing mail and, and bring back the mail that then gets put into the, the mail register. It's a real pleasure. I love, I love Tuesdays. I really look forward to them. Um, I think Reg and I get on really well. Hey. Hey. We talk up footy, uh, we talk up life, and it's all good, isn't it? All good. All good. Yeah. Reg has been volunteering with the Department of Industry for over a little over 12 months now. Reg comes every week to work um, a couple of days a week, just in the mornings for a few hours. He comes with a support worker, which is of great assistance to us, and the support worker assists him in his duties around the department. He has this great smile, and, and everyone sees his smile, and you know it, it's infectious. And and people yell out from the other side of the floor, "Hi, Reg!" And Reg yells out, "Hi!" And 
and it's just really good to see Reg, and it's just a, he's just such a positive spirit, and and um, you know people just love to see Reg. So, Reg, how are you doing? Morning, Reg. How are you, mate? Hi. Good to see you. How are you travelling today? Good. Good. Morning, Reg. How are you going? All good. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Department of Industry is where his other job is. I mean, that's a government department, so for him, he has to wear the good trousers and the good shirts and really look the part. And he just loves it. He loves getting dressed up, so, and then walking in like he's, you know, it's same as everyone else. Everyone's really happy um, being involved with Reg in the workplace, and um, we've worked in with Reg's family. We're constantly improving our disability awareness and removing barriers from the workplace for people with disability. And we're always looking for new opportunities for people with disability in the workplace. His duties um, vary from shredding to collecting paper to moving equipment between buildings, unpacking photocopying paper. He's also come in and helped us set up for various functions. We do various tasks from time to time and I, and I said to Reg one day, I said, oh, Reg, just, just chuck those papers over there. And um, I turned around and the next minute he just chucked those papers over there and they went flying everywhere. So I guess, I guess the learning for me was that uh, I've got to uh, make sure that I word things in a more appropriate manner. Reg and I and, an, and another fellow um, do the footy tipping each week and, and Reg loves his footy. He's a Brisbane Broncos fan and um, was leading at the front of the season. Now I think I've got about a point on him but I think after last weekend's results he might be ahead again. <laughs> All right Reg, let's do your footy tips Sharks. mate. You want the Sharkies? Yep. All right. Roosters. And the one. Which one here? The Raiders. Raiders? Yep. But you know it, it's, it's just good to do the footy with him and um, yeah he Absolutely loves the footy and tells me about all the teams. He knows all the teams by colour and their their logos of the and, the and their mascots and that. So yeah, there's your footy tips in the book, mate. So my cousin Reg, um, I ran into him when he was at work actually, Volunteers Day, and he was wearing a Queensland Maroon supporter jersey, as he usually does around State of Origin time. He's also a very passionate Bronco supporter, and um, it happened to be that I got tickets given to me uh, for my 30th uh, to the Broncos and Canberra Raiders game down here in Canberra. Hopefully, we can come up with a win, which we did. Hey, Buller Edge. Mm. And um, so then after the game, we got uh, photos taken with. Nothing hobbies. Justin Hodges, who's his first cousin. Thiday. Sammy Thiday. Ben Barber. Ben Barber. And Josh Hoffman. Hoffman. Yeah, Hoffman. If he's watching, watching Justin, you know, Reg is your number one fan, cuss. He just likes to um, talk about, you know, his culture and football and, and just everyday life. Right to the present now, it's just this lad, you know. He just touches people by his presence. Yeah, if you get to meet him, you'll get to know and love him. Well, he was a boy then, but that's the type of man he is now.